up and die. There are discussions and there are opinions and they are everybody and then they follow the leader. It's a matter of respecting the leader opinion, not, um, not just anything. It reminds me when the Romans used to pay the taxes to the, to the Muslims and the new Roman emperor came and he decided he doesn't want to pay any taxes anymore. And he writes to Harun al-Rashid saying, the emperor before me, which was an empress, she was a lady and she was weak, and she paid, but I am not paying anymore. So what does Harun al-Rashid write back to him and says, from Harun al-Rashid, Amir al-Mu'mineen, to so-and-so Kalb al -Rum. Harun al-Rashid, the prince of all the believers, to the dog of the Romans. But don't, if we look at here, after the Roman emperor got the letter, he decided to pay the taxes and ask for peace. Why? Is it afraid of Harun al-Rashid? No. Harun was only one man. But when he said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the prince of the believers, that all the believers would follow him. Not make opinions and decide each one who's going to decide his own like we do today. We start analyzing and yes, I'll follow or not. So it's the strength of the word Amir al-Mu'mineen, not because there was one man appointed. It is that knowing that the, the Mu'mineen, the believers will follow this man. And the Roman knew that his people would not follow him because they were much more. So you have to understand what it really means rather than just he was one man, a great courageous man. It doesn't make history, does, it's not made by one great man. And if we look at the battle of Arlitta, uh, of the battles with the Romans, and when you look at the battle where the uh, Muslims took Jerusalem, the Muslim army was 60,000. And the Roman army, some say was 250, some say there were 300,000 or half a million. And yet the Muslims won. Why? Because You cannot try to convince me that a half a million or a quarter, a quarter of a million when they're facing each other face to face, a small group could win other than uh, It is the word of Allah because if you put a large number, the sheer force would always win. There is no doubt about it. But it is all بإذن الله subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final issue is when Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, retired Khalid ibn al-Walid. And again, when I read the history when I'm young, I wonder, this great, great uh, leader, why do we retire him? Why do we take him from his job? And as we do this today, when we analyze everything, you know, people wonder why does Umar ibn al-Khattab take Khalid al-Walid? Khalid ibn al-Walid, this great leader, off and appoint somebody else. Was he jealous of him? Sometimes you read in the book, some people say he was jealous because they, had com they were competitive when they were young and all other reasons. But what does Umar ibn al-Khattab say to us? And what he tells us is the truth because he says, I wanted the Muslims to know وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory is from Allah. Khalid is but a human that could die tomorrow. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there and victory is from Allah. And the Muslims have started thinking that they are winning because Khalid is their leader. And this is totally wrong and we have to fix it. Because he's bringing us back to reality. Victory is from Allah and that's how it works. We have to understand and we have to study our history and we have to go back and analyze. And yes, they were great heroes, but they are humans. And if we read the Quran, we'll understand the real factor behind it all. In Tansurullah and Surkum Wasabit Abdamakum, if you support Allah and support, uh, obey Him, He will make you victorious. Very simple things. And yet, around our dinner table, we discuss other factors, a lot of other factors, and a lot of other things that's all irrelevant. If we studied the history of Islam and studied everything, we will know that man nasu illa min indillah, and we go back to Islam and go back to understand. <coughs> And one of the things quickly is I was reading in the newspaper about the U.S. deserted soldiers that come to Canada and should they send them back or not. And when I read things, I always relate them back to Islam. What does Islam say about this? And one of the letters to the editor, it's a veteran, a U.S. veteran said, we give our soldiers training that they should not obey orders that is against the law. If there is an order given to them by their leader, that it is against the law, you disobey. And subhanAllah, this is a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he sent the army out, he says, you do not burn trees, you do not kill women and children, you do not, you do not. And he put in the Muslims that they have to obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala first, 
and obey the rules of Islam and obey the leader after. So here, subhanallah, you look at the things and we find that's why as Muslims, we have to learn true Islam, learn each one of these issues, and this way we know to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah obey our leaders. Allahumma hadina ya maulana fi man hadayt wa afina fi 